Good day viewers, welcome to our first program for Great 8 History Lesson. My name is Nathaniel Nawaka and we are going to look at one of the mightiest empire the African continent has ever known, namely the Zulu Kingdom. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe the origin of the Zulu Kingdom, discuss how the Zulu Kingdom developed into the most powerful state in Southern Africa by 1816, explain the causes behind the expansion of the Zulu Kingdom after 1818, evaluate the leadership of Shaka. Let's get started. Um, you can already see on the map that Zulu Kingdom was not an island. That means that it lived in an era ruled by one code, which is survival of the fittest only. We will learn about a few more in just a while. Before I start with the origin of the Zulu Kingdom, I would just uh, want to make sure that you all understand where it was located. Let us now start by describing the origin of the Zulu Kingdom. 200 years ago, the Zulus were a very small group of farmers who had settled in the southeast part of southern Africa. In the early 1800s, present-day KwaZulu-Natal was sparsely populated by farmers and herdsmen. This area consisted of large grasslands with some forests. Occasionally, they were fighting over grazing, but it was mostly peaceful. This changed when population increased and competition for land increased. People formed large groups for protection and strength. Those large groups often clashed over control of land and cattle. There was intense rivalry between the two of the kingdoms in the area, the Ndwandwe and Mutetwa. During this period, a military leader emerged. His name was Shaka. Now that we have looked at the origin of Zulu Kingdom, let us now discuss how the Zulu Kingdom developed into the most powerful state in Southern Africa by 1816. The Zulu Kingdom developed into the most powerful state in Southern Africa because of Shaka's leadership and military tactic. Shaka became the king of the Zulus assisted by Dingiswayo in around 1816. He joined Dingiswayo's army in 1809 and soon became a commander. As a commander, he helped defeat the Mutetwa and conquered other small chiefdoms around the Zulu kingdom. I would like to remove the elephant in the kitchen, Shaka. In case you get to be asked to write a paragraph about him, Shaka was born in 1787 the son of Sezenga Kona and Nandi. Shaka was stabbed to death on the 22nd of September 1828 by Dingane and Mlangana, his half-brother. He was replaced by Dingane as the ruler of Zululand. He joined Dingiswayo's army in 1809 and soon became a commander. Shaka became the king of the Zulu, assisted by Dingiswayo in around 1816. Another Shaka's military tactic, Shaka organized his army using ideas he learned in the Mutetra army. One, long shield and short stabbing spears, or Iklo, for close hand-to-hand -hand fighting. He preferred his soldiers to fight barefoot because he believed that sandals would make them to slip or slow them down in battles. He introduced buffalo or cow horns tactic. The main body of the chest would face the enemy. The two separate groups of impis formed the horns. The horns would run around the enemy and trap them from behind. Once the horns had stopped the enemy from moving back, the chess would begin to attack. Last strategy, Shaka kept a permanent army in military camps or regiments. This helped to keep soldiers fit, encouraged, well-trained, plus they were not allowed to marry as a way to make them loyal to the army. Let us now explain the causes behind the expansion of the Zulu Kingdom after 1818. Shaka's Zulu Kingdoms expanded in the following ways. His army became more powerful using various military tactics. This allowed him to conquer many other clans and chiefdoms. Shaka did not only use force, he also used diplomacy to grow his, his kingdom. 
The Zulu state was the most powerful state in the area and controlled the trade routes to the Gao Bay, today known as Mozambique. This allowed the kingdom to become even more powerful and wealthy. Let us end our topic by evaluating the leadership of Shaka. Some people speak well of Shaka, while others speak bad about his way of ruling. The Zulu kingdom was created after the Mutentua kingdom broke apart. Shaka successfully controlled the trade routes to Portuguese Delgao Bay. This brought revenue and wealth into the kingdom. He allowed British traders to stay in the area after 1824. The powerful Zulu army was built, his army remained powerful, and it was a threat to European colonizers later in the 19th centuries. Many people remember Shaka as uh, the king who brought pride to the Zulus. Some people remember Shaka as a cruel king who killed his own men and other neighboring tribes through endless wars that lasted more than 10 years. Some hated Shakas for the Mfekane, which caused many deaths and displacement of people from their areas. Now that we have come at the end of today's lesson, let us have a look at the Zulu's kingdom. Before 1800s, most of the people living in Southern Africa lived in small chiefdoms. There was intense rivalry between the Ndwandwe, Ntetwa, and later the Zulu kingdom in what is today KwaZulu-Natal. The African kingdom of Southeast Africa soon came into contact with a powerful European country, Portugal. At the time of the rivalry between the Ntetwa and the Ndwande Kingdom, Shaka was chief of the small Zulu chiefdom. Shaka used many improved military tactics to build up the Zulu army into the strongest in the region. In 1820, Shaka's Zulu's army defeated the Ndwande's army and drove them into what is Mozambique. The Zulu kingdom became the most powerful kingdom in the area. The period in history during which the Zulu kingdom expanded is sometimes called the times of trouble, also known as Mfakane, crashing. In 1828, Shaka was assassinated by his half-brother, Dingani, who then became the king of Zululand. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Take care until we meet again.